Our next speaker is Yao Hui Zhao on social and economic challenges in an aging society. So uh, you may share your screen. You're on mute. Wait, um, I, I'm sharing the wrong screen. Okay. Uh, is it showing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. My assigned topic is social and economic challenges of an aging society. And I'm very glad to speak after Axel. Uh, um, uh, the, the topics I'm, I've chosen uh, are a continuation of uh, his discussions. So let me go on. Uh, so what are the challenges of an aging society? I think there are major, mainly three. One is, can we achieve healthy longevity? Uh, uh, so the last topic uh, shows some facts uh, in, in Europe. So, uh, but the goal, if we are going to have uh, a good uh, aging society, then we, sh we, we ought to have um, one that has shorter time spent in a healthy state so that people can increase their productivity, uh, can have more potential to contribute to the society. And then the second topic is given health. Can we utilize people's productive potential? Uh, uh, i.e. can we postpone uh, retirement so that financial pressure can be alleviated? And the third one is uh, in regard to the social security system design. Uh, can, can we have a system that encourages working longer and, and, and at the same time uh, deliver financial security at the old age? So, uh, so uh, on the first topic, uh, determinants of health, we all know uh, some of that is determined by genetics, but mostly, um, the factors are malleable uh, and, are, and are social determinants of health. These include lifetime exposure to uh, poverty, low education, unhealthy environment, and unhealthy behavior, like, uh, like Axel just stated, and ac access to quality health care and social support. And these are areas that, um, that, that can be changed by policy interventions. Given health, uh, there is still room for improving functional uh, in independence, uh, which means with, when people have all kinds of illnesses, they could still live an active life. Uh, these can be achieved by house management uh, and or age-friendly community and home environments. Uh, these, these kind of environments would include like trans public transportation, tap water, seated toilets in the house, uh, gas or electric cooking stoves, internet, etc. This would influence what we, what we call activities of daily living, which include um, things like whether you can go to a toilet on your own, uh, have bathed yourself, uh, cook, uh, go shopping on your own, etc. So this uh, age-friendly environment is very important. Uh, we uh, we looked at the Charles data. Uh, Charles is the China Health and Retirement Longitudinal Study. And uh, uh, in, in our five waves of data, we're already ob observing decline in uh, activ activities of daily living. Uh, these are three bars representing different definitions of uh, independence. And over time, regardless of which definition, narrower or wider definition, we see a decline. And we analyze the causes and uh, part of it uh, a big part of it is uh, due to the improved home environment uh, in this period, uh, mostly due to the rural uh, improvement, rural uh, living, living, improve, living environment improvement. 
um, second topic is uh, we know that uh, longevity people are living longer, but uh, do they retire later? Uh, this, this picture shows uh, a decline, well-known phenomenon of declining labor force participation for many, many decades. And, and then a reverse uh, back in the recent 20 years or so. Uh, so that, that means um, despite people living longer, uh, labor force participation actually declined. Uh, so, the, so there's substantial excess work capacity uh, that, that's not utilized, that's, that's wasted. And uh, that's been shown in many OECD countries and also in China. So what are the explanations? There are wealth effects, uh, employer discrimination against older workers. And, but most importantly, as Axel just pointed out, uh, the, the retirement social security system uh, is, is very important in, induce, in inducing early retirement. Um, uh, and we need a, a, a social security system that encourages working longer. Um, and but we know many social security systems um, actually make people retire early, and one evidence of that is spikes around statutory retirement ages. Uh, this is an example from Charles. Um, so these are conditional hazard of a retirement that is conditional on not retiring in the previous year. How how many people end up? stopping work in the following year. And uh, the, we show four lines, actually. The, the, the orange line is uh, urban female. And we see spikes at age, ages 50 and 55. These are the statutory retirement ages. And for men, the biggest spike is at age 60. This corresponds to the urban uh, retirement age for men. But if you look at the, the, the bottom two lines, these are rural people, there is hardly any spike. Uh, and we also know that the, the, uh, the work, the labor force participation among urban, work, urban people are very, very low compared to the rural people at old age. So these are uh, uh, evidence of a social security system that is badly designed that's not suitable for aging uh, society. So let's go back to the, the design of the uh, social security system. Uh, we know it's in the traditional society everywhere in the world, uh, people insure themselves through their own savings or through their families. But the dependence of the family has declined. Uh, uh, there, there are fewer number of children and uh, children are... And children are also uh, moving away uh, from, their, from their parents. Uh, this figure shows number of children in Charles uh, in the four waves, we're already showing very stark differences in the number of children. People in their, uh, in their 70s or 80s have like three or four children, but people in their 50s are having half of that, that many. And uh, over time, we're seeing a shift down of the curve of the showing the the, the very dramatic changes in fertility uh, uh, in, in the past uh, decades. So, uh, so, so, with, uh, so that means we, we need social security and many, many countries in the world, even uh, lower and middle income countries have adopted social security and they have actually expanded social security trying to cover everyone. And uh, we all know their DB, defined benefit, defined uh, contribution or a combination of the, of the, of the two, like uh, in the multi-pillar multi system. So these systems have different incentives. Um, and uh, let me just uh, talk about the mandatory part. Uh, most most countries require mandatory contributions. Um, and the reasons are 
Uh, one is people who are not forward looking do not save enough uh, on their own, so they have to be forced. And the second is to prevent free riding in the presence of altruism toward the poor people. So people don't, if people free ride and don't contribute and they're poor and society have to cover them. So, uh, but there are two design issues um, with the social security. One is uh, in the incentive uh, for working longer. And second is, are they resilient to aging and politics? So the incentive, regarding incentive, um, the, the DB system uh, is usually regarded as entitlement. So it's difficult to, and difficult to change retirement age as you have seen around the world. Uh, and, but the, the this DC system, uh, defined contribution system is much better because pe people own their own accounts. Uh, so when they postpone another year, the benefits of that is fully captured by the individual. So, the, so there is no uh, externality sort of to the society. Um, so in terms of encouraging uh, longer working lives, defund contribution is definitely better. However, uh, the defund contribution alone, as we're realizing uh, recently, it does not guarantee sustainability. Uh, and the threat to that uh, is really when there is a leakage, uh, mainly uh, in the, in the self-employment sector. Um, in low and middle income countries, they're usually a very large uh, self-employment sector uh, and they're usually exempt from contribution by the even the mandatory social security system. And uh, because of the large, large number of people who do not contribute, when they are old, they are, they are, they have, when they have no income, uh, then, uh, then the, the society uh, usually would come in and then, um, uh, and then uh, uh, help them. And then that, leaves, that leads to some incentive problems. So, so there's, there are several solutions to the old age poverty problem due to this big hole that's not covered. Uh, the first example is, is Chile. The Chilean um, defined contribution system, um, funding system since 81 uh, was to replace a, a, a defined benefits uh, system that was in crisis. And the Chilean model was heralded as a model as, uh, for, the, for the rest of the world. Uh, it worked well for some time, but recently the design flaws have been reviewed as being fatal. Um, there, there are a few of, a few of uh, flaws. Uh, the most important one is it ignored the large self-employment sector in Chile. At least a third of the labor force uh, is in self-employment. Two minutes, uh, two minutes. Oh, okay. So, so that leaves, uh, so then the solidarity pension in 2008 to cover 60% of the poorest um, leads to distorted incentive. And then uh, recently uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, the country allowed people to withdraw money and a, a very large amount of money was, was withdrawn actually from the, from the accounts. Um, so, so that's that's very uh, that's a very sad end uh, almost for the Chile. Um, and social assistance is another option. Uh, this is universal pension with flat benefits or social welfare. Uh, well, I want to spend my last two minutes talking about the Singapore system. I think the Singapore system uh, is is quite resilient. Uh, uh, it. It induces self, the self-employed to participate in the funded uh, defined contribution system with interest rate top-ups. Uh, and the, the, the poorest are supported uh, mostly in the form of in-kind um, benefit programs. Um, so, 
so in summary, uh, let me just talk about the age, the social security part. Uh, I, I, the, 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 the demise of the Chilean system suggests that pension system design should not leave coverage, large coverage holes. And the way to, uh, to, uh, to cover the whole, uh, I, th I think the, the best way is the Singaporean system, which provides an incentive for the self-employed uh, people to participate. And they also uh, allow family members to contribute to their other family members. So it, in doing that, it regards against political meddling of, this, of the defined contribution system. Uh, because old age poverty is prevented ex ante and uh, or handled by largely in kind assistance program. That's all. Thank you.